All right. This is the first ever edition of the single GP podcast. That's at least what we're calling it, right, Shane? For now. Maybe we pivot later. Maybe we pivot later. We're going to start with that. And we're really honored today because we have uh, Howard Lindzen from Social Leverage. And Howard's got the merch going, so we're excited about that. Howard, thank you for joining us. Let's do it. All right. So for people that don't know, who is Howard Lindzen and what is Social Leverage? Howard Linton is a 57-year-old white uh, male. Uh, all the problems you could imagine a, a 57-year-old white male having. Uh, live in Arizona. I have uh, one wife, two kids, one dog. Um, and um, I'm a venture capitalist, seed stage investor focus. We write a million dollar checks and we're investing out of our fourth fund. And we also have an emerging manager fund. Amazing. All right. Now, Shane was really excited. What was, what was, uh, why would, why did you want Howard to be the first person on the single for people? I, I like how he uh, makes fun of people on Twitter. I find, I find it entertaining. So that is, that's the primary reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, Howard, Howard's someone I really respect and, and definitely look up to in the space. And um, I just really like talking to him and I wanted to just, you know, expose the world to his thoughts on a you know through through this platform and i'm grateful that you could join man so much appreciated so howard what is the current most controversial take that you have going on well i mean the, the i don't think i have a controversial take i'm generally a trend follower so um we whoop is that background noise me or you i think it's you you're good we're good yeah, the Mike, maybe most, mute your mic when you're not. There. Yeah, I would mute your mic. The, the most controversial take I have right now is that um, I think people are are lying. They're saying you know the two things can be true, right? Like you can be a great time to invest. It can be a great time to start a company, but it can also be a terrible time uh, to be a venture capitalist because there's too much money chase, chasing few, you know, too few good too few deals and at the same time we have a lot of new venture capitalists and a lot of new founders and a big change in trend caused by interest rates so there's just a mismatch there's like i said it's never been a better time to be a founder but it's also probably never been a worse time to be an lp in one of these funds and and so you know there's a, a bunch of controversial takes in that another controversial take is you know uh, my friend Fred Wilson, he's been my mentor for a long time, just in the distance, not so much, you know, every day. And, um, you know, there's this, you know, when I started in the business 2004, 2005, 2006, as a somewhat professional investor in startups, uh, it was um, all the power lied with the venture capitalists, right? And then by 2020, 21, 22, the pendulum had swung very far. You know, combination of why, why, uh, why combinator and easy money and unicorns and you know, kind of this global uh, phenomenon of of tech, and so the pendulum swung very far in favor of the founders. You know, and there's and and now we're in that process of swinging back, and so there's this. I don't even know if it's a discussion really. It's there's this this group of young investors from the rolling fund era at AngelList, you know, thinks that uh, everything's about, oh, you know, being founder friendly and how much work I do for the founder, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's a group like me who've been in both eras, you know, when ventures had too much power and the founders, I feel had too much uh, power. And I'm like, Hey, you know, you work for both parties at certain times, but in the end, it's about returning capital to your investors, right? Like, so we've kind of, that's a big, you know, disgust behind the uh, walls discussion. But like, I think, I think the LPs are going to be disappointed with returns uh, if, if people don't change their attitudes. I, tend to agree with most of what you said you said a lot of things there so to, to unpack it um you think it's a great time to invest and it's a great time to have a company um but at the same time there's too much money taking too few deals and it sounds like it's a 
decent time to be VC, be a VC, but a horrible time to be an LP. Did I get that correct? No, I mean it's it's listen, it's 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 a great time to be a founder. Prices come down. Uh, you've got all kinds of tools. You know, when I talk about, for example, AI, the cost of AI has come down, so that's another tool in our favor. While cloud costs may be going up, AI costs are coming down, so people can use AI. So there's all these great tools coming online for people, but the puck is moving, right? Like. You know, if you're a founder of an app startup today, it's really not something that's interesting versus a founder of something that's building for the web or building for the blockchain or building for AI. Or, um, so it depends what type of founder you are, but it's never been easier to start a company. In terms of investing, it's never been a better time to be an investor because you have tools like Robinhood. Wealth front, uh, you have, you know, you can trade crypto, you can gamble, I guess, um, and you can invest on angel lists, you can invest in SPVs, you can invest in funds. Uh, so there's all this talent uh, and all these ways to uh, invest and all these ways to start companies. I, I take this quote from this guy, Fat Jewish, a uh, very funny, funny guy and very smart guy. Uh, he, he I, I, I produced this documentary and he has this great line in the documentary that's like, um, you know, 20 years ago, you could, if you really were conservative, you could sit in your house and sit on your couch and nothing bad would ever happen to you. Not, you know, the, you, you may not get rich, but like nothing bad could ever happen to you. And, you know, flash forward 20 years and you could sit there on your couch and pretty much blow up the world and your account and your life. Um, so things have changed, right? And so we, you know, we've gone from this like safe, you know, somewhat safe world of like no phones, no digital, no, you know, network to this world where everybody's got this kind of weapon in their hand. And um, so, you know, there's just, a, you got to know the, the playing field has, has changed tremendously. Yeah. Access to everything has gone up. Access to capital, access to being canceled access to your employer finding out things they shouldn't know and everything in between so yeah there's I, access yeah. to being getting rich there's access to getting defrauded there's just many as, as he says there's just a lot of things that can go wrong right in the corner of your own house at the push of a button and so you know that's not going away and so i count these all as like who can, you can call it positive or negative it just is and um, in a world that just is, uh, you can complain all you want, but you've really got to build your networks and continue to curate your networks uh, as the cycles evolve. And, um, you know, treat all these things as uh, privileges, not rights. Uh, a lot of these things are privileges and you may be 16 years like old, that. so you don't understand that, or you may be 30 years old. There's a lot of people screaming about this is their right. And um, it just that bothers me um, because this is all a privilege. Now, <laughs> that's just, you know, how I feel about it. It doesn't really matter, right, if I yell it out loud or not. But that's how I treat every tweet. That's how I treat every podcast. That's how I treat every investment. That's how I treat all my time with my kids, my wife. It's a privilege. It's, it's for me to screw up. And, and I can choose to go through life aggravated and yelling at the machine or I can choose to treat all these kind of luxuries of digital and technology as uh, opportunities and as privileges, which I do. Now, occasionally I screw up and I overstep my boundaries and, and uh, some people find that quite funny. Uh, I'm never really, when they say something on the internet that causes a, store, a stir, um generally i'm looking for a stir but i never expected it to go as far as as it goes you know and that's kind of when i abuse my privilege and when you abuse your privilege you have a chance to lose your rights so there you know there are those things that people need to understand i think all those words have been weaponized i'm avoiding every single one of them yeah because other i don't want to validate that those are even words anymore <laughs> Uh, but well, I'm think... not scared of that. I'm, I'm not scared of that. I think. Oh, let think... them have their little useless argument. Yeah, yeah. You should. You should. <laughs> Let's build an island I... somewhere of, away from the stupid ideas. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I have to step in. So I know he gets excited when I talk about the All In podcast. The All In podcast is not something I listen to. Okay. But I'm, 
but I'm forced to comment on it because I have LPs and I have founders that listen to it. So sometimes you get dragged into the arena and that's upsetting when you get dragged into the arena and then you have to comment on something that I feel is stupid or, you know, meaning I can't control how my LPs and founders get information. If Everybody has the right to listen to whatever they want to. So I sometimes have to go out into the, I guess, the modern, you know, we're not going to get uh, necessarily killed, the modern digital gladiator sphere and challenge some of the bullies <laughs> and people spreading false information just to stick up for the people that, you know, have to put up with this nonsense that people with these big microphones and big networks have the privilege uh, and that they're abusing. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like with the all in thing, it's like a lot of a lot of very hot takes there. Um, what what is some of the your least favorite takes that they've had, and and what are some of the things that you would tend to agree with that they say? Because they're VC and startup guys, but they talk about Russia. They talk about yeah. There's a know, political politics, element, a financial yeah. element. Well, again, this is uh, not interesting to me. It's a it's their right, and again, I only have to deal with the fact that my LPs and founders listen to it. They're very popular podcasts. For for a decade, I, t I just wrote about this, for a couple decades, I was all about disrupting CNBC. And I've made a living and I've made uh, money for LPs um, and I've taken a lot of risk and CNBC is still standing. So, you know, sometimes I look at my work and I go, boy, what a waste of uh, 20 years of my life. You know, these are... Uh, you know, it depends on your your attitude towards life. But some days I look back and I go, well, Jesus, the same idiots are on TV yelling with a bigger audience than ever. And then sometimes it's be careful what you wish for. Right. Like in 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 being one of the people, the Pied Piper of bringing all this down, we've created a new monster. And I call it Jim Cramer 2.0 and the Chamas and the David Sachs and the Jasons and other people in the Galloways and I would say Kara Swishers of the world have, uh, they've become the Jim Cramer 2.0s. They're just replacing the old ones with just as bad hot takes on every subject in the world that Jim Cramer had. So, you know, I guess it's just a lifelong lesson to be careful what you uh, work on and what you wish for. And uh, the world works in mysterious ways. And, uh, you know, yeah, clicks have replaced, uh, you know, hot takes. And uh, people are chasing clicks and uh, you've got to make strong, you know, you've got to really curate kind of your feed and your network. And one of the things I say all the time, is not, you know, it's not about information uh, overload. It's about filter failure. And so I think as this world continues to go on, um, it's the information is going to keep coming. The tools are going to keep coming and it's up to the best you know, the people that are going to have the highest quality of life are those that tune their filters. You know, it's no different than, you know, people that take care of their gardens. You know, there's, you know, it's it's taking care of your house, taking care of your garden. Those that, those that, that stay on top of the, these little things, I get the most satisfaction out of it. And so for me, I'm pretty good about my filters. I'm constantly, you know, taking feedback and I'm constantly, you know, curating my my feed to make sure that I'm listening to people that like bring that extra quality, and uh, it's it's worked. That's amazing. One thing that is causing, I think, a lot of uncertainty is just the uncertainty of kind of foundational things, right? So one of the recent, you know, controversial hot takes was maybe the impact of the all in guys that you mentioned on SVP. What was it? cause or effect and but we are seeing a lot of inst instability overall in the financial underpinnings right between banking a lot of you know unrealized bad debt on real estate if you're an lp out there and you're looking at what's going on what you know what does howard recommend what is howard's vision for what's going to happen the next 12 to 24 to 36 months <clears throat> It's you know it's a fair question. I try to say I don't know. Uh, it's right off the the bat because I don't know, but I do know a few things, and that is, um, young people like yourselves who communicate with me are looking for men. There's just thousands of of young people that I deal with looking for mentorship, reading my blog, listening to the podcast. So the the curiosity 
out there as much as there's a meatheads out there and you can't, you know, the internet brings you the meatheads and the curious, uh, we've never been attached to more curious people. Okay. So I, I can't, I don't know the percentages, but obviously at scale, we've never had more curious people network together and therefore progress is going to accelerate. I don't know if that means chaos is going to accelerate, but in let's take Silicon Valley bank as a specific thing. This again, this is why I don't like, uh, this goes to filter fail. This is why I don't like listening to hysteria when there's a little bit of, you know, when the VIX gets, you know, close to 30, I call it. Um, I tend to go to a much smaller network. So in the weekend of Silicon Valley Bank, listen, Thursday, Friday, everybody who are experts, uh, I immediately lead dismiss. Okay. The Silicon Valley Bank was a $300 stock on a Wednesday and a zero by Friday. So God bless the people that were short that stock. God bless the, 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 the many, there were many that have predicted that their balance sheet was a mess. It's not like this was fake news. Um, the company had mismatched duration. Okay. But the average founder found out about it on a Thursday. Uh, the average founder with an account at Silicon Valley Bank, that's deer in the headlight stuff, right? Like you've got, most people would have given you the advice to consider opening another account and, you know, maybe the following week would have been, been moved. So by Friday night, hell had broken loose. Okay. And those with the best network stayed the commas, meaning I called, you know, some LPs that are presidents of bank or chairmen of banks. And I called a few people that had been through this before, whether they were bond managers, et cetera. And, and the general consensus amongst my LPs and friends was that by Sunday night, it was impossible for them not to backstop the depositors. So I think I tweeted it. I think uh, Lawrence Summers has been a few through a few of these was pretty calm about it, but the rest of the internet was screaming. Uh, where's Janet Yellen? Uh, and this is when you have to have this tight network and turn off the rest of the noise because, you know, by Sunday night, the government had done a pretty good job. Why did they do a pretty good job? Because they took, they did a much better job than 08. Uh, maybe they didn't do as good a job as we'd like to them do. You know, in a perfect world, maybe Friday night, Janet Yellen would have come out and saying, listen, there are problems in the system and all depositors will be backstopped. That would have shut Twitter the fuck up. Yeah. But instead you had Bill Ackman and David Sachs and a bunch of screamers uh, spreading my sources say, I had three sources. They all told me we were going to be fine. Um they seem to have sources that in hindsight are the worst sources of all time. So I don't know, like your sources suck, man. Like, I don't know, like, why are people listening to you? So um, I think they the also is, felt that they influenced it though, right? I think there's the problem with these, these gentlemen is they're super smart. Okay. I just don't <laughs> God trust. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. These are very super smart. Yeah. Like I said, it's Jim Cramer 2.0. Jim Cramer went to Harvard. These people, went to Harvard and Stanford and they've also Waterloo. started 20 companies. <laughs> they've, they've invested in billion dollar companies. They don't put makeup on every day and go on TV. They're much more evolved than Jim Cramer and, and previous media people. These are very savvy velociraptors yeah. and these velociraptors uh, like chaos and they uh, use these moments to build audiences. We saw Davey, do this at Barstool during COVID when he went into investing and we all get sucked into it for a few minutes. And those of us, those of us that really, uh, we get offended and, and, you know, we, we appreciate people that step up during times of crisis as these guys, we hope they would do these people that step up and with their sources, with authority, to, you know, start yelling. Okay. But eventually you have to be right. Okay. And eventually yeah. you have to be, you also have to hold yourself accountable to all the times you were wrong going up to that. And we have this army of people that don't. So I refuse to engage in that. On occasion, I'll call it out. But again, this goes to filter failure. A lot of people out there are listening to the wrong things. And in a world where we've never had more curious people and we've never had things like AI becoming cheaper, I prefer to focus on the network of people that are working on those things that are proliferating, not on fear mongering and on spreading misinformation. So I just, you know, what a great time for leaders to step up, but it's been unfortunate in our industry in the venture capitalist industry that what, what, what came on that weekend was nonsense, right? In 08, 
we FinTwit and Starch is a very clear headed kind of group community thing. We hated the right people, the banks. And guess what? We were tur- we were let down by the government. The government saved the banks. In 2023, so far, it may it may look like a bailout, but Silicon Valley and their employees and the shareholders and the bondholders are wiped out. You know, First Republic people have worked there for 20 years. Their stock's down 90%. Yeah. But yeah. They're not being bailed out. Totally so, not. And so the government, as much as we hate it, is actually considering the chaos and considering the squares and the firms and all the lending and all the leverage in the system that really isn't controlled. The system's holding pretty good considering the knuckleheads that we have uh, screaming on the Internet and the knuckleheads that we voted into office. I, and the and the teardown in 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 our institutions, uh, from media to news, I think the systems are holding pretty good. And I'm not saying that means everything's going to be hunky dory, yeah. but I prefer to, I prefer to take the other side of that trade and say the next three years will probably we'll look back at the at this month and this year and the and the next six months ago we got through it. These are like. I don't think Silicon Valley Bank is the event. I still think there's it's other not. things. Yeah. I still think there's other things lurking. That's the scary part. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, so- you could be scared, but <laughs> I, I would say right now the markets are acting very healthy considering okay. the rise in interest rates, the the China U the China US situation, the Russia right. Ukraine situation, okay. the bank situation. If you take all that into account. Either we have, we're living in the most complacent time in history, very possible, very possible, or things are going to be okay. And it's up to an investor and an individual and you and everybody else that makes markets to kind of weigh those things and place their bets accordingly. Yeah. No, I, I like what you just said. I, I woke up to, to LPs in hysteria. I mean, like, tell your port codes to move and then... I guess I had the, the other side of the coin. People saying there's no way this this won't be solved by Sunday night. Just chill. SV, SVV has done a lot for this this VC community of ours and has driven so much growth. We shouldn't be pulling a run on them. And then when I, it's kind of when you look back, it's like a 1.8 billion dollar loss, which is really all that happened here on on, on some um, mortgage backed securities. Uh, you know, they they could have taken that hit. It, it was really it was Twitter and it was these podcasts causing fear mongering that actually caused S to, 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 yeah, to, to, to get that rent, to get that run. The luckiest, so. the luckiest people of the last two weeks are Goldman Sachs. Um, they did the bond deal, the emergency bond deal. And I mean, odds are, you know, I have no proof, but the odds are, um, you know, a message was leaked on telegram or signal from someone at Goldman Sachs that started the run. I mean, that's how it's always worked. Um, you know, Silicon Valley deserves to die. They handled this 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 terribly. Uh, maybe there'll be a perp walk for some of these people, but they blew up their own bank. You know, the game theory is game theory. Whether we like David Sachs or Peter Thiel, that's game theory, right? That's the markets just doing their thing. There was a hole. I, there was a hole this bigger. However, we want. There was a hole in Silicon Valley Bank's balance sheet, and the internet found it. And when it hit the right pressure and the right tipping point, it exploded. Okay. So. We froze. Oh, I'll have to cut this part out. <laughs> yes. Temporary uh, cut out. No. Are you back, Howie? No. Oh, bummer. He might. I wonder if he drops out and drops in. But such a boss, though, taking the podcast from his car. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> he actually has a lot of. We should um. He had some like legendary lines. Yeah, like we that. should. We should invite him so to do companion. something regular, even if it's like once a month or quarter or something. I like what he said. Um. I don't know. We. I need to listen to it again. Yeah, we'll he have to. Really, he had some really wise lines. Oh, bummer. Oh yeah, he dropped. Let's give him a chance to jump in again. Yeah, he's crushing this. He's doing a good job. I like. It. Whether you agree with what he's saying or not, he's he's on a he's on a roll of right course, now. Of like course, yeah, he, yeah. I'm like, see if he's good. Back like in getting or not. contrarians like him on, you know, people with. Oh him. yeah, he'll, he'll probably share it on his Twitter too once we oh, cut yeah. everything out out of him. For sure. Yeah. 
see if he jumps back in or not. If not, we can just send it. Yeah. I did want to kind of ask him about the whether he was long or short on crypto versus blockchain or both. He said he had 30 minutes. He might have, yeah, uh, he might be done. He might be done. Do you want to do an outro just in case? Yeah. All right. Sure. I think we unfortunately we lost Howard. He may or may not be able to come back in. We're trying to give him a chance, but yeah. we really appreciate such a legendary investor jumping on. That's a great way to start this off, Shane. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, he had so many good lines there. Um, it's like the cyclical, the cyclical nature of like that pendulum swinging from founders to to LP power and back and forth, and about uh, the fear mongering and power that uh, I guess you know comes with the territory. And uh, you know, it sounds like he he is a great. Uh, mentor and fred wilson you know legendary gp that's crazy yeah you know, union square so <laughs> you know i've no i've i'm not surprised that howard has so many takes that i agree with about kind of you know being contrarian and and being in the, in the networks of people building as opposed to the people kind of you know monetizing fear i guess well i i think it's interesting because you know like there are people that try to sway things and then he said i follow trends and that is consistent with what he's talking about which is he's just trying to see what's going on he's got an adaptable framework and that framework says don't panic don't overreact there's always winners in everything and i just how do i how do i align myself to be a winner that seems to be kind of what he's saying yeah. don't do you think it's contrarian for him to say that he follows totally. trends though you talk to every vc and they're like Oh, we'd like to be contrarian, but they don't. They just well, say that. You know what I mean? But you, in order to go contrary, you got to know what the trend is. So it's almost like he's spotting the trend, and then he's he's thinking of it from a different perspective. So it's like it's not that he's jumping on the trend. It almost seems to your point that okay, what's the trend, and what's the hot take on the trend? Because the hot take is controversial and different, and that's where the opportunity is. Particularly if it's doom and gloom, I'm going to buy in. Yeah. If it's if everyone's piling on, it's time to get out. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. It's, I love it. It's kind I, of um, interesting. Well, yeah, I hope we have Howard yeah, back. He's great. a really interesting guy. And yeah, that was fun. Let's let's let. I'm excited for the next one. We have a great lineup of studs uh, for this podcast, and we're going to continue to deliver some, you know, hopefully exciting content. So, I'm excited. Um, is there anything you want to promote, Shane? um not this podcast another uh, one you, you could hit me up on twitter <laughs> if you're an early stage fintech oriented company and are looking for investments uh if you are a category or stage agnostic company looking for my angelist syndicate to get involved we uh have no parameters other than great founders so we can invest in it there and mike is going to help me run that uh moving forward what else got some exciting company updates but nothing yet i'll, I'll save that for the for the future Oh, there's Howard. We're going to give him a, he gets a chance to wrap. We can. There we go. Okay. Howard. This looks like a debate. Guys? How's it going? I, You're uh, back. <laughs> I locked my, my phone overheated, so I got to wrap it up. I just no got worries. back online. So, so we were, can we edit that? Are we, yeah, we we'll, edit. We, we, we'll, we'll deal with it. Uh, first of all, just, I was, I do... I was... oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. Sorry, it's it's stuck awesome. for so I, ju I just wanted to thank you for spending time with us and i know unfortunately you did get cut off and you know we have limited time we want to invite you back i don't know you tell us how often you want to do this we're willing to comply we enjoy spending time with you and there's so much we can learn so first of all acknowledge you for your view take on uh view on things and being cool under pressure and i think that's veteran leadership right there shane yeah, I mean, we've all, are we, are we still going, I mean, we all panic, like, that's not the point, like, the point is, you know, in these moments, like, who's going to, you know, when I learned in 05, 06, there was Fred Wilson, Roger Ehrenberg, Brad Feld, there was this blog network, we didn't quite have Twitter, uh, Twitter was, you know, by 08, the financial crisis, we had Twitter, and we had the group of people that were like, and there still is. Don't get me wrong. There's a group of people that are like willing to always help. But um, we have these great tools and it seems like some people prefer to uh, to abuse them. But that's just how for, this is just how the web works. Um, Agreed. And we can. Yeah. So, you know, you know, these podcasts are places to have people have kind of kind of play by play, but also kind of let's look back and see what we could have done better and what um you know, in the end, I think it was like a really good, you know, cleanup so far by the government. Now, 
when you go from zero to 5% interest rates, other things are broken and we will see it's not done. if that is. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't think it's done, but I'm not going to come here and, and complain about all the things that commercial real estate's next. And as an expertise, I would say, be very careful when things break this quickly of, uh, you know, the next shoe to drop and, um, you know, treasuries, you know, people learned a lot about what T-bills are and uh, it's uh, now that it's in people's vocabulary, they have another, you know, product that they've learned about that has its uh, benefits and uh, it's still a safe place right now to hide out in treasuries while you think about that. Actually, I'm glad you said that because I was asking Shane about that just before this. So it's like, if you're in treasuries right now, do you still want to be? It sounds like you still think it's a safe place. So that's interesting to know. Well, again, if your bank's only going to pay you 0%, right? And in, in fact, you can get insured in a sweep into Vanguard and a few products and then also buy treasuries. Yeah. Now, if you're 28 years old and your board of directors didn't tell you any of this when they gave you $50 million, um, that might be, you might have got bailed out this time, but you need to call some mentors or a banker and really figure out this is your money. It's a privilege to have this kind of capital lying around your bank account if you're a founder. And it's your responsibility. Guess what? If you got away with it the first time, you're the CEO and not losing all the company's money is one of those uh, responsibilities. That is great advice to end on. Howard, thank you so much for spending time with us. I know you're a busy man, so we really appreciate it. We do want to leave the door open and invite you back, whether it's a month from now or three months from now. Um, also want to invite you, actually, would you be interested in doing an AMA for a bunch of Y Combinator, Techstars, and other founders? Yeah, I mean, online or a video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. online. Uh, yeah, I do lots of AMAs, so fire, cool. yeah, anytime. All right, we're going to set that up. Thank you so much, Howard. Shane, is there anything you want to wrap with? Thanks, Howie. You're the man. I appreciate you, brother. Thanks, Shane. See you guys. Keep going.